Welcome to the program today. Mono Gonzalez here in studio by Skype with Jonathan Kahn, and we have a great program in store. We're going to be talking about his new book. But before we do, I want to remind you of our upcoming conference in Norman, Oklahoma. If you are not going to join us in person, uh, we certainly want to invite you to join us through a live stream. You can see more information on that at watchersweekend.com. We have 24 different speakers that are joining us, 1,200 people on site. It's going to be a magnificent time of fellowship, but also just great and solid teaching uh, and want to certainly want to get you uh, the opportunity to take advantage of that. Well, today we're going to have a great conversation with Jonathan. Welcome. Hey, great to be with you, Mondo. And so you have your new book out here, which I have read, which is tremendous, uh, The Josiah Manifesto. Kind of talk a little bit about the name uh, and, and how you came to, to bring this about. Yeah, actually, this came to me. Uh, it's the only book that's come to me on the day that the last book was finished. When I, the day I finished the Return of the Gods, the Lord said this, and He started leading me this way. Um, the, you know, because also, you know, people when they read some of, it, they get scared. Some of them, <laughs> some people get scared because I'm giving warning or revelation of where we're going. So what do we do about it? You know, so this more than any other book I've written has an, the answer or an answer to it. So it is, first of all, uh, I would say this, what if God was really giving us a template of what to do for the days to come? What if there was a revelation about, you know, in view of where we are heading um, and in view of what the future is, what do we need to do to prepare, to prevail, to overcome, uh, to survive, you know, but, but to touch the world um, and to live as we're called to live. Is there a way, is there a template, is there something that God has given from the Bible, but that is for this hour, it's a revelation for now. Um, is there, could there be a mystery that we are living right now, right through that, an ancient mystery from God that actually lies behind the events of our times? Um, so specifically, could there be an ancient calendar from God that actually ordains the events of our time, and so specifically that it actually gives the dates in many cases. Well, this is what the Josiah Manifesto is gonna open up. So it's the mysteries of where we are now, and these things are gonna reveal really the prophetic hour we're in, where we are going. And then the last part is like is the answer, is a, is a blueprint, is a not only for now, but for the end times, which I believe the Lord is saying, this is now, for now. Um, and so what the manifesto part, it's called the Josiah Manifesto, is kind of the, the last part is the manifesto. That, and you'll see how, what, the thing is, let me put it this way, we're gonna, it's kind of taking the reader on a prophetic journey of mysteries, and of all these puzzle pieces, and then they all start coming together. They all start kind of converging, and when they converge, they open up the key, which opens up this final revelation, which is, what do we do? How do we live? How do we overcome? I mean, this, this doesn't matter who you are. How do you deal, you know, how do you protect your family? How do you stand if, a, if, a, if there's persecution? If you're being told to go against God, what do you do? Um, how, you know, um, is there, what are the powers that we have? Um, what are the ways? And that is linked to this figure, Josiah, which we'll, I know we'll get to, but it's, it's, um, it is really more than any book. I mean, what's unique is um, many of the mysteries in other books that I've done, from The Harbinger all the way to The Return of the Gods, are kind of coming home for a landing in this one, converging in this one, and then opening up more than every other one an answer and really how to prevail in the days to come and what's coming. You know, what I think is amazing about uh, just how God has been using you, <clears throat> not only to talk about things in the future, but just the uncanny, that's the word uh, that I kept coming to my mind in, in, in reading the book. It's uncanny about the, the ways in which God has brought you in the past. And one of those was, uh, which I enjoyed reading about, was your trip to Cuba. Now, he, I mean, this, this was absolutely incredible. <laughs> kind of give us a background about, again, and even the, the, the way that you interacted with Fidel Castro, of all people. It's just tremendous. Normally, when I don't put myself in the books, you know, because it's it's not, you know, it's about the mystery. But I witnessed some things, so this, so I actually witnessed prophetic things. So, yeah, I was called, and this kind of begins on that island. I was called to go to the island of Cuba. Fidel Castro, the dictator of Cuba since 1959, he opened up. I was told they were told me he opened up the island for one month to allow religious freedom. Then it was closed. So they asked me to come. The Christians asked me to come and open it up with the sound of the shofar and then minister throughout the island. And this, this gathering, went. Th these events started on one side of the island and ended up in Havana, in Revolution Square. The last event was Revolution Square, and Fidel Castro came to it. 
Um, and Fidel Castro was watching, you know, I was told several times he's watching you. He doesn't know who you are. He's saying, what's this Jewish guy doing in the church? And so this guy with a beard causing this ruckus is what he said. You know, so so at the end, and, there, and there's so much that happened. I won't go through through it. There's so much that, um, you know, the mystery. I was led to speak of the Jubilee, the mystery of the Jubilee. And so much happened along that. But I'll just mention one thing. At the end, um, I was able to go into, I was invited to go into Fidel Castro's presidential palace. And I said, okay, what do I do? I are already, before I even left for Cuba, I, I'll say this, a man gave me a word saying, you're gonna enter the king's palace. And, and so I, I prepared for that before it happened. And I, had a, I, had, uh, I was led to give him a gift, actually three gifts. And one was, one was a Bible, which were banned in Cuba. <laughs> the, the, the next thing was a, well, a shofar, which is a sign of the Jubilee. And, I, and, the, and the third thing was a prophetic word. I, it was a piece of paper. I wrote down a prophetic word concerning the Jubilee. So, all about, so, the, so it was the sign of the Jubilee is the shofar, and it was the word of the Jubilee. And that actually, Mondo, that actually was, the Lord was doing it because it was actually a sign of how much time he would have left. Um, either, you know, the, the thing was, you know, was he going to actually allow this, the kind of revival to or allow this month to continue? He didn't. He tried not to. But the revival continued. The revival in Cuba never stopped. But he didn't. And the thing is that so it was the time it, you know, he started in 1959 in a, in a, a certain month and a certain day, January and a certain day. Well, the amazing thing, Mondo, is the mystery of the Jubilee. When you take what I, I gave him that and when you take Leviticus seven times seven years, the 50th year, which is actually when, once you hit 49, that's the 50th year. Uh, the, the, what happens is his reign would come to an end in the year of, ju of his jubilee of the reign, the jubilee, not just the year, the day, the actual jubilee and day, the 50th year, the 50th day, and to the exact hour, the exact hour that Batista, the dictator, abdicated, he abdicated, I mean, you know, and it was all there. And so that kind of is setting this mystery that really is actually going to have to do with all of us. This mystery of the Jubilee that God actually uses it in time and space is now going to affect all of us. But it began with Fidel Castro uh, on the island of Cuba with the Jubilee. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's so amazing. It's, and I love the way that God shows that he is the the sovereign God over history, that past, present and future. And, and, and as, again, as we start looking towards the future, we're reminded of what God wants to do. And one of the things you bring up uh, in the book is you, you talk about the prophet Jeremiah and Mount Sinai yes. and how that connects to COVID. I mean, t kind of yeah. give us a background of that. The, with, with Sinai, that's the, the timetable and that's the Jubilee, that every 50 years you have the Jubilee. Now the Jubilee, we most of us think about that. It's just, it's a great thing. Well, it is a great thing, but it's also, there's another side to it. You know, if you lost your land, you get it back in the year of Jubilee. But if you took somebody's land, it's taken from you in the year of Jubilee. So the Jubilee is both, you know, it's restoration, but also restitution. There's an aspect of judgment as well. So you got that, the 50th year, that's one thing. Now the other piece is this, Jeremiah, he prophesies over the Valley of Hinnom, where the, where the people of Israel were killing their children, offering their children. And he says, because of what you did, the blood of the children, it's gonna come back to you. It's gonna become a valley of slaughter. So the principle is what a nation does to its children will come back to it. If it kills its children, it will death will come back to it. So now, take this now to America. America began killing its children, not in 73, but in 1970. That's when abortion on demand entered America. That's when it first came on our soil. And so where's the Jubilee? What's the Jubilee in year? Well, the Jubilee in year, the 50th year, is the year 2020. Did anything come back to us? What happened, the year 2020 is the year that the plague comes to America. Now, now the world also had partaken in this sin. This is the generation that killed more children than any other, but America was actually leading in this. And the other thing was, the other thing is that Jeremiah says one of the ways that the, the judgment is coming for, the, the, for what you did to the children is in the form of, in Hebrew, a dever gadol, which in Hebrew means a great plague or a massive pandemic. So it happened in that time, but it's even more uncanny or more specific because here's the thing. When exactly did abortion on demand make its uh, initial entrance? Well, it was in New York and it was in the, the legislature of New York. The bill up first appeared that was gonna change New York and change America 
on January 20th, 1970. All right. What happens if you go forward 50 years, one jubilee? It takes you to, it pinpoints January 20th, 2020. Anything happen? January 20th, 2020 is the day that the plague came to America officially. That was the day of patient zero entering the gates. And so the ex exactly 50 years from when we, we began, it began with the children, 50 years later to the day comes the plague. You know, it, you know, this is the stuff that, uh, as I sit back and think about, it, you you can't make this you can't make this up. And so, you know, if you're watching today, I, I hope that you you just see how God is at work in, in the lives. He's, he's at work through providence. And we're going to talk about some other things in a minute here. We're going to take a little break where you can see how to get our magazine. And again, in our magazine, we, we try to cover all the different topics that are happening to keep you updated on the prophetic developments like this. In case you haven't noticed. The whole world is spinning out of control, but we are not surprised because many of the things taking place were prophesied in the Bible thousands of years ago. That's why we want to offer you a very special subscription to our magazine, The Prophecy Watcher, that will keep you on the cutting edge of Bible prophecy. Stay informed on prophetic world events. Follow the nuclear threats from Russia and Iran. China's march to world domination, the likelihood of another global pandemic, the rise of artificial intelligence and transhumanism, war in the Middle East, the UFO phenomenon, and the latest technology preparing the world for the mark of the beast. With your gift of $50 or more to support the worldwide outreach of Prophecy Watchers, you will receive 12 issues of the magazine in either print or digital format. You will also receive 10 bonus DVDs. This special offer is available anywhere in the United States with free shipping included. Don't wait. Pick up the phone right now and call the toll-free number on your screen or visit us at prophecywatchers.tv. Stand with us today and help us take the message of Christ's soon return to the whole world. Well, welcome back. And we are talking to Jonathan Kahn about his brand new book, The Josiah Manifesto. You know, Jonathan, before we, we get back into it, um, one of the things that I appreciated was um, not only do you have the book, but you give us a little insight about the DVD that you have that goes along with helping people understand. Oh, yeah, this is this is. Yeah, it is the Josiah Manifesto Uncensored. Um, this is only available. I mean, it's not it's not on Amazon. It's not in any bookstore. This is exclusive. So for, with Prophecy Watchers here, you can get that. It is eight one hour DVDs where I'm putting in what I could not even put in the book. You'll get the overall mystery, but you'll get things. You'll actually see it. It's um, you'll see the things happening. You'll see prophetic manifestations captured on videotape. Uh, even even the uh, well, it's beyond. I'll just tell you, it's filled with that and um also i'm gonna it's sharing all sorts of mysteries that are not even in the book it's not just more it has all that so it's very special you can show it to your church you can show it to yourself but you'll be very blessed so it's very exclusive eight one hour deeds the josiah manifesto uncensored yeah to me that's awesome for for bible studies or sunday school groups or whatever just to have a have a weekly teaching and you know it to me i, I was truly blown away and just reading the book about all the <laughs> You know, what we'd call is coincidences, which we know that <laughs> that's not really a good theological term. But one of the things yeah. that, that you talk about in the book is not just the arrival uh, of COVID, but also the other circumstances. I mean, we all remember about being locked up and not being able to go anywhere. Kind of, kind of talk about the mystery aspect yeah. of that. Yeah, the, the entrance of COVID was, you know, we all heard about it, but it didn't affect us yet. It, it, it affected us in March for everybody. In the middle of March or, you know, sort of everything happened, everything hit, the plague fell. It went from, uh, you know, I thought it was like a few hundred people had infection. By the end of it, it was like 70,000 people had. It. In the middle of March, President Trump goes on the, on the air and announces basically it's come. He, that was the day, it was called the day that changed everything. And we all, we all remember it. If we even if we don't remember the date, we were, it was also the day that we were quarantined. America was quarantined on that day. Um, on that day, the stock market crashed. You know, on that day, the lockdown started falling all over our lives. We were locked down. Within a few days, we were all locked down. It was called. The, it's the day that changed everything. And that's what the media calls it all over. What day was it? It was March 11th. It was March 11th, 2020. That was the day. What happens if you go back one jubilee to the beginning, 1970? 
Well, it pinpoints the day, March 11th, 1970. Anything happen? March 11th, 1970 is the actual day that abortion on demand began on American soil. From the death of the children, the killing of children, shedding of blood, to the time, to the actual day that the plague just hits America, falls upon America, it's 50 years, one jubilee, to the, again, the exact date. You know, let, let's talk about this for a minute from a theological perspective. It, you know, is God just being mean? Is God just being uh, petty? What What is God's message to bring it back 50 years? And, and what's his message to America on, on this situation? Yeah, well, this is, you know, God is never petty and he's never mean, but he is just and he is righteous and he is he is of love. Therefore, he cannot say you can just kill, shed the blood, murder 60 million children and and nothing happened. Everything's fine. No, that cannot be. That's not love. You know, so the fact is, I mean, it's actually mercy because we killed 60 million children. You know, it's merciful, you know, to get a wake up call, you know, like this or the plague. You know, God is merciful and, and sometimes his mercy is severe, you know. But the thing is that you cannot do this. You cannot. You know, it's clear from the very beginning of the Bible. You shed the blood of the innocent. Blood will be shed. You know, you know that death is to death. God is a God of justice, but he's also a God of mercy. He also died so we would be saved, you know, from judgment as well. Gave his own life. Yeah, and it, to me, as people watching, you again, you look in the Old Testament and you do have these cycles and these patterns. And as you mentioned, the templates, you know, you have David. David committed a, a, a sin with the census yeah. and 70,000 people died. It wasn't David, but yet God holds people accountable for their leadership. And, and yeah. so the leadership made these decisions back in the 70s and, and now we're, we're reaping the whirlwind on it. You know, one, one of the other fascinating things is uh, I love the, the connection you make from some of the geography uh, in the land of Israel, again, as a template for the world. And one of those is the Valley of Hinnom, in, in the sense you compare it to New York. Kind of talk about that. Yeah, it's not only it's not only converging in time, it's converging in space. Because, because you know, when, when Jeremiah prophesied over the Valley of Hinnom, where they killed their children, he said, it's going to be it's going to be changed to the Valley of Slaughter. In other words, the, the death that you started there is coming back there. Well, is there a Valley of Hinnom in America? Or what is America's Valley of Hinnom? There is one, and that is, it's New York. Number one, New York is the place where abortion on demand really was heralded to the rest of the nation. In fact, the Supreme Court, when it, Roe versus Wade, actually allude, actually made reference to New York's law, what New York, so New York really pioneered it to the continent of America. And then the other thing is that, not only that, uh, New York is the America's Cap abortion capital. It's the capital of the nation. More children, their blood has been shed in New York than any other place. So it is the Valley of Hinnom of America. So the question is, then when this plague comes, would it come, would there be any focus on New York? It's exactly what happened, if you remember. Mm -hmm. When the plague came to America, and then America became the number one, the center of COVID for the world, for the world. Then New York became this, this COVID capital of America, which is the capital of the world. So New York became the global capital of the plague. The abortion capital became the plague capital. And the thing is that there were, in fact, you know, one out of every three cases of COVID uh, or the, the, in the world were in America at that time. At, in America, one out of every two was in the little tiny land of New York, little tiny sliver. So now, the, now here's the thing. It was so much so that on one date it reached a milestone and it was, eight, it was April 10th, New York had more cases of this plague than any other nation in the world, including China, more in New York, okay? Now, the thing is that it was April 10th. Now, is that anything? Go back 50 years from that date and, and is there anything significant? April 10th, 1970. New York legalized abortion in New York on April 10th, 1970. So it's the place, it's the time, it's everything. Yeah, to me, to me, you start putting those together. And what I found is the, the way that you developed it in the book was, again, you, go, you went back in, in the early times, again, in the, in the early part of the Jubilee, and you just said, it's kind of like all the, your other books too as well, that God is showing you, hey, take a look, get in there, there's something here to see about these dates and it's not coincidence or it's, it's not just random. It happens yeah. on exactly, I mean, to me, that's the hand of God in, yeah. again, in giving a, a loving warning to people that he's trying to call people back to repentance. The, the yeah. other thing, again, that as we talk about space, not only the Valley of Hinnom, but I thought it was fascinating just talking about 
the Eastern, I want to talk about the Western gate, but let's talk about the <laughs> Eastern gate first. One of the things that one of the things is that when Jeremiah prophesied over that Valley of Hinnom, he did it by the gate. He did it by the pot, the Potter's Gate. Um, and the thing is that there's a there's a you know they were killing their children. The Valley of Hinnom was right by the gate of Jerusalem. Um, they were killing their children by the gate. So have we killed our children by the gate? Number one. Number two. The Bible said talks about judgment coming to the gates. You know the judgment will come to your gate. Well, is the, does America have a gate? It doesn't have wall. I mean, doesn't it's not a walled city, but does it? Yes. And that and the, the gate of America, we all is New York. That's the gateway. Statue of Liberty. Everything comes in and out. That has always been the gate of, of America. And so, what happened? Number one, it's interesting how so many judgments seem you know happen there. Nine eleven there. All so many things happen. So so much evil begins there, and so much has come upon it. So we saw, you know, you have this thing, you have the, this plague coming upon New York, okay, the, the, at the gate. But a gate is also a, th- a place where not just you come to, you go through. So could, um, could New York have been a gate, through a throughway in all this? Well, here's the thing. Uh, 50 years ago, or well, 1970, abortion didn't just come to New York. It spread to the nation through New York. In fact, in fact, for those first three years until Roe versus Wade, most the majority of abortions in America were performed in New York and it spread people from different states would come. It spread it spread abortion throughout the entire nation and literally ultimately to Roe versus Wade. So it was the gateway through abortion, most abortion. Now, all right, let's go 50 years later. Could there be a mystery here? Well, when the plague came to us, you know, and they didn't realize this, you know, Mondo, until they did genetic studies on the virus. And what they found out is that if you had COVID, most likely, most of the cases of COVID came through the gate of New York, through the Eastern Gate, the same gate where we killed our children. The same gate where that death came through, the same death, the plague, the same way this plague came to the same gate. You know, and that's the Eastern Gate. Okay, but now we, we alluded to the Western Gate. The thing is, when abortion came to America that year, 1970, there was one other gate uh, on the continent, and that was it was the Western Gate. It was Washington State. That was the other gate. There were two gates, 1970, through on the continent. So, so the question now is, 50 years later, could there be a mystery here? Well, the answer is, Mondo, that when the play came to America, it came through New York and one other gate, Washington State. In fact, patient zero, the first case, was in Washington State. And it was on the day that New York first started, started moving to abortion. I mean, so it was 50 years, exactly. And so, so, so consider this. I mean, think about this. If you had COVID or anybody who did, the, 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 the virus bore the markers of the two gates by which America shed the blood of its children exactly 50 years before. I'm thankful that the Lord has allowed you to see these things and, and to, to, to bring them about. Again, to be as a reminder for those that are watching that God is, God is not silent. God is always yeah. active. He's moving. He, he, he is seeking, again, to draw people to himself, but he does hold people accountable. It reminds me of Galatians 6, 7, that uh, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. You know, what, what a person sows, they're going to reap. And again, and God is showing mercy here. But we're going to take a little break here where you can see how to get Uh, Jonathan's book and also the DVD set, which again is a tremendous blessing. So take a listen. If you're a regular follower of Prophecy Watchers, you know that we follow God's calendar very closely. Throughout history, we can look back and see that many major events have occurred on a Jewish feast day. It's not a coincidence. God is paying attention and letting us know that He knows the future and he will bring it to pass exactly as his word says. Jonathan's new book and companion DVD set are full of intriguing connections as he allows us to look back and see that God was certainly paying attention to events. The Josiah Manifesto is available in hardcover for your gift of $30 or more to Prophecy Watchers. The eight DVDs are available for your gift of $60 or more. And as always, shipping is included anywhere in the USA. For our international friends, please note that additional shipping fees will apply. When you purchase both the book and DVD in the Josiah Manifesto package for your gift of $85 or more, we're going to send you some special DVD bonuses. Jonathan's live presentations from several of our prophecy conferences. If you've never heard him speak in person, you're in for a real blessing. 
Call the toll-free number you see on your screen or visit our online bookstore at prophecywatchers.tv. Remember to keep our country in your prayers and keep Prophecy Watchers in your prayers. With a worldwide television outreach, we're reaching into the homes of people who are looking for answers to the world's confusion and the Bible has the answers through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching today. We'll see you next time here, there, or in the air. Well, welcome back, and I hope you do get Jonathan's book. To me, it was a tremendous read. It was, it was encouraging and it was exciting, but it, it really, it kind of reads like a thriller because of the way that you're bringing it together. But in there, again, another connection that you make is with Abraham Lincoln and the prophet Jeremiah and COVID. I mean, how in the world does that fit together? Well, Jeremiah said the principle is, and we know the biblical principle said, you know, for, for the blood of the children, this is going to come back. So it, one is going to match the other. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, in his second inaugural, said, you know, the, if this is a, he saw it as a judgment, the Civil War, and he said, this is for, for slavery, that every, that every drop of blood that is shed by the, the lash of slavery, the whip, will be matched by one, a, blood, a drop of blood shed by the sword of war. So could, the question has to be, it's the unavoidable question, the unaskable question, could there be a match with also not all the, not only all the, the dates and all the places and all the exactness, but also with the numbers, the magnitude? Well, here's the thing. In the first three years from the time abortion entered until Roe versus Wade, that's that critical period, 1970 to 73, how many babies, how many children were killed? The answer is 1.3 million, 1.3 million. 50 years later, you have another three-year period of a plague that matches, each one is the jubilee of the other. And so, so how, many, how many Americans died? The answer is 1.3 million. Exactly, the plague struck the exact number of the blood of the children that were shed 50 years before. You can't do that. I mean, and, that, and this is just the beginning of the mystery. I mean, you know, again, what we're, I want people to know that it's not that, that God is, uh, is being unkind or mean here, but he, he is a God of justice. And he, there, there are serious um, repercussions for when we reject his word and we deny. And of course, of course, we go after the innocents. Yeah, and also to say, it's not that, you know, it rains on the righteous and the righteous alike. It has nothing to do, it's a, na it's a national and civilizational event. It's not a personal thing, you know, because Jeremiah dealt with the stuff that happened to his nation. But we cannot mock God. It says you cannot mock God. You cannot mock God with 60 million children. Now, this is just the beginning, okay? And it's going to go into all sorts of territory. In fact, next time we talk, we're going to go to the mystery behind someone called the child of the Nile, someone who was actually born to change the history of America without even realizing it, um, and so much more. So uh, the Temple of Baal, the object, the mysterious object that appeared in America, that's what, we'll, that's what we're, we're going to be opening up, and more when we, when we do this again. Amen. Well, thank you, Jonathan, for being with us today. It, it is, we're running out of time, but uh, make sure to pay, pay attention to our next show where we're going to get into some of those details. And, you know, we just always ask that you would continue to pray for us here at Prophecy Watchers. There's a lot going on. Uh, God is really opening up doors for us to continue to get the message out. We could not do it without your prayers and support. So appreciate you watching today and make sure to catch us next time.